Yoo-hoo! It's Menopause Taylor. <laughs> I know I don't look like myself today, and that is intentional. I hope I look like Tina Turner. That's because this tutorial was inspired by Tina Turner. Sort of. You know how we've spent a bunch of time on the estrogen window of opportunity? We have spent the last 10 videos talking about estrogen as it pertains to the estrogen window. And I wouldn't be surprised if at this point you're thinking like Tina Turner. She sings a song entitled, What's Love Got to Do With It? And that song came to mind when I was thinking through all the questions you might have about the estrogen window. And I thought you'd probably ask, well, what's progesterone got to do with it? So Tina's song popped into my head as the perfect way to present a video to answer that question. But when I decided to use her song as the theme for this video, I was a bit misconceived. You know how I tell you ladies that most of what you think you know about menopause is misconceptions? Well, I'm that way about popular music. Sometimes I think I know a popular song, but usually I have it all wrong. And that was precisely the case when I decided to use the song What's Love Got to Do With It as the focus of this video. You see, I'm a classical music fan, so pop music completely escapes me. And when I came up with the idea of using that song, for some reason, I thought it went, what's love got to do, got to do with it? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and the short answer to what's progesterone got to do with it is absolutely nothing. Now, knowing that I'm not really familiar with Tina's song, I went to YouTube and I found a video of Tina Turner singing what's love got to do with it. And I watched the whole thing wondering, when is she gonna sing the part that goes absolutely nothing? I was just so shocked that absolutely nothing was nowhere in her song. I mean, I was certain that's how the song went. <laughs> so then I searched for the absolutely nothing shot song and I was doubly shocked. The song that has absolutely nothing in it is an entirely different song by an entirely different artist who isn't even female. It's a song by Edwin Starr called War. And it goes, War, <gasps> what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. And I can't tell you the rest of the lyrics because I can't decipher most of them. It's really a poundy, bouncy, rocky and rolly song, and it's exactly the kind of song I don't listen to. <laughs> so, what I had done was take two completely separate songs about two completely different things by two completely different artists, and I had merged them into one song. But I didn't know I had done that. I was certain that I knew Tina's song. My friends tell me that I'm way behind and really nerdy when it comes to popular music, and they're right. But my misconception proves a point. I did with rock and roll songs the exact same thing that you ladies do with information on menopause. I vaguely knew two separate things that had nothing to do with each other, and I combined them, not knowing that they had nothing to do with each other. And I tried to create logic from something completely illogical. So we'll use my mistake as the basis for this video. We're still talking about the estrogen window of opportunity, and the question is, What's progesterone got to do with it? And the answer is absolutely nothing. 
Now, I'm not going to be singing my way through this video. I sing classical music and, you know, Latin and stuff. So this is not my thing. But why should you care about watching this video? Well, you should care because it's crucial to every woman who gives any attention to progesterone for menopause. And this video will clear up a lot of your misconceptions. Okay, as usual, let's go back to basics. I've taught you about the three human sex hormones, right? You know that there's testosterone, there's estrogen, and there's progesterone. And the three hormones are just like the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. We're going to ignore Goldilocks for now. What we care about are those three bears. I mean, I know it's weird to be standing here looking like Tina Turner telling you about the three bears, but that story will help you understand the three sex hormones. You see, the great thing about the three bears is that each bear had his or own, her own stuff. Papa Bear had his own bed, his own chair, and his own porridge. Mama Bear had her own bed, her own chair, and her own porridge. And Baby Bear had his own bed, chair, and porridge too. And just as each item belonged to only one bear, each of the three sex hormones belongs to only one member of a human family. The sex hormone testosterone is the adult male hormone, so it belongs to Papa Bear. And the sex hormone estrogen is the adult female hormone, so it belongs to Mama Bear. And then there's progesterone. Now, women tend to think of progesterone as one of their two sex hormones, but it isn't. It isn't your hormone. Progesterone is the baby's hormone. It belongs to baby bear. I know, I know, you're scratching your head saying, wait a minute. Well, finish your head scratching and I'll put this into perspective for you. Remember in tutorial nine when I taught you that the literal translation of progesterone is pro, which means in support of, gest, which means pregnancy, and own, that means hormone. Progesterone is the hormone in support of pregnancy. And the only reason you produce progesterone at all is to support a pregnancy. It has no other purpose. It maintains a thickened lining in your uterus to cushion a baby if you should get pregnant, and then it supports the pregnancy until the baby is born. And if you don't get pregnant, progesterone is what causes that thickened lining in the uterus to shed. And that's because there's no need for a cushion if there's no baby. So the only reason you produce progesterone is for the benefit of a pregnancy. In other words, progesterone is not your hormone. It isn't there for you. It's for the baby, period. <laughs> and progesterone has absolutely nothing to do with any of your other bodily functions besides making it possible for you to get pregnant and stay pregnant long enough to deliver a healthy baby. That makes sense, doesn't it? The problem is that so many women have been led to believe that progesterone is their hormone rather than the baby's hormone. Many women believe it's just as important to their bodies as estrogen, and many women believe that progesterone is more important than estrogen. None of those things is true. That's as backward as my merging of the two songs. What's love got to do, got to do with it, and absolutely nothing. They have nothing to do with one another. To put it into perspective, Recall that in your reproductive years, your estrogen and progesterone balance each other during your monthly cycles. It looks like this, where estrogen is high in the first half of your cycle and progesterone is high in the second half of your cycle. So they balance each other. 
Now, what's happening there? What's happening is that estrogen thickens the lining of your uterus, and progesterone causes it to shed. That's what's happening every single cycle. And then, when menopause comes along, both your estrogen and your progesterone disappear. They're almost zero. So this is menopause here. But you've learned that your entire body depends on estrogen. And the estrogen window is about taking estrogen to prevent diseases that are associated with menopause. It's about taking estrogen to prevent heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease. Why? Because estrogen is your hormone. Progesterone is not your hormone. So you take estrogen to prevent these diseases. And progesterone has absolutely nothing to do with any of that. But what happens to your uterus if you take estrogen at menopause? It thickens the lining of your uterus, which can lead to uterine cancer. So you have to take a dosage of progesterone to balance your dosage of estrogen. And the dosage of progesterone you need will depend on the kind of progesterone you take. So there are a bunch of crazy names for the different kinds of progesterone. I'm going to show them to you now. There's medroxyprogesterone acetate, micronized progesterone, norethindrone acetate, norethindrone, and progesterone gel. Now, you don't have to know those names. What you need to understand is that the necessary dosage of progesterone to balance your dosage of estrogen will vary depending on which of those progesterones you use. So as usual, I've made you a chart so that you have this information readily available. And the chart's going to show you the standard dosages of progesterone to balance the standard dosages of estrogen that I gave you in tutorial 85. The chart is available in the descriptive section of this video right below the screen, and it's available on my website, which is menopausetaylor.me. So here's the chart. So to summarize what you've learned in this video, progesterone has absolutely nothing to do with the estrogen window. But if you take estrogen to prevent diseases associated with menopause and you still have your uterus, you have to take a dosage of progesterone that will balance the estrogen and protect your uterus from uterine cancer. OK, that does it for Tina Turner and Edwin Starr. What's progesterone got to do with it when you're talking about the estrogen window? Absolutely nothing. Enjoy your week. I'll be back to being Menopause Taylor in a week, and I'll see you then. In the meantime, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Bye.